It's January and George gets home after work, as usual, at 5pm. He's promised himself to eat more healthily this year, just like he knows he should. But today's been a particularly hard day, especially after having a few weeks off for Christmas, relaxing, celebrating and not really exercising any self-control. Hence, a strict diet seems particularly challenging today and it's only the first day back. The impulses to eat, spend money, watch TV, sleep in and rest have not been challenged and his emotional chimp brain has been in complete control for the last few weeks. The ability to flex his self-control muscles and override these impulses to eat and adhere to the standards he's set for himself seems rather difficult today. David, on the other hand, got home today and managed it quite nicely. He opened the fridge door, took out the pre-chopped vegetables and steamed them for 15 minutes. So what's the difference between George and David? David knew how self-control worked and George had no idea. David had a few tricks up his sleeve and knew what challenges he might face. But George was left battling with his own impulses and arguing in his own mind. But why is it so hard to do what we know we should? Research has found that most of us struggle to control our impulses. This is not new, but self-control is thought of by scientists as an energy source. It sounds obvious, but the more you are forced to spend your self-control energy, the less you will have available in your self-control bank account. There have been many studies done to prove this. In one particular study, Participants were invited to sit in a room at a table where a plate of radishes and a plate of chocolates had been conveniently placed. Half were told that they could eat whatever they wished, and half were told they could only eat the radishes, and that they must not eat any chocolate. The participants were left to their own devices, and told that the experiment would begin shortly. When the researchers came back into the room, they gave the participants several puzzles to solve. But they didn't tell them that the puzzles were actually unsolvable. The researchers wanted to test how long it was before the participants gave up. They found that the people who were told not to eat chocolate and hence spend self-control energy gave up much quicker because they had less self-control energy to spend solving the puzzles. The researchers concluded that self-control was like a muscle that could be fatigued over time. Just like a weightlifter gets fatigued towards the end of a gym session. But the good news is, is that your self-control muscle can become stronger. David knew that and for the last few weeks, He'd been using his smartphone for five minutes each day with his non-dominant left hand. Sounds strange, but scientific experiments have shown that doing something like this takes self-control. And it can actually make you more likely to say no to that chocolate muffin in the canteen at work. He'd also wrote down what was important to him, and he stuck it on the fridge door. He wrote down that he valued his health because he wanted more energy when family time came around. He wanted to be more successful at work and wanted to feel better on a day-to-day -day basis. He also knew about something called implementation intentions. If and then statements that you write down that take away the need to battle with your mind about on-the-spot decisions. For instance, if I get home from work and I'm really hungry and tired, then I'll have a piece of fruit a drink of water and take 10 minutes to think about what's for tea. Not only does it take away the pressure of making a decision because you've already made it, it provides a metabolic self-control boost, changes your state and changes your behaviour. Science has told us that a boost in metabolic energy will allow us to override impulses. David knew that. David knew that he was more likely to give in to impulses when he was tired, late at night after work so he would carry healthy snacks for the journey home, so he had more self-control to use to make a good decision when he got home. If you want more self-control, monitor when you are more likely to be out of energy and plan ahead. Set standards of behaviour by writing down what's important to you and what you value, and make them visible on the fridge door. 
Strengthen your self-control muscles for five minutes a day. You can do this in many ways. Wait an extra five minutes for something that delivers pleasure. Or take part in an activity that takes self-control. Don't rely on self-control as the only answer. Look at your habits and how you can change them. Look at your environment. Stock your fridge in the right way. Realise that your brain is effort minimising. It will more often do the easy thing. If your house is stocked with healthy food, and junk food means a 10 minute drive to the nearest shop, then eating healthy is the effort minimising thing. And eating unhealthy is the hard thing to do. Look at what you believe about food. Is junk food actually more inspiring to eat than a healthy meal? I don't think so. But it doesn't matter if I'm right or wrong. If I believe it, I'll require less self-control around unhealthy food.